Well, hello everyone, it's Pastor Mark from Amelon United Methodist Church, and I want to welcome you to week five of our Lenten devotionals, being hosted by the Union of Churches in Madison Heights. Over the past four weeks, my fellow pastors have come before you, one per week, and given you blessing and inspiration for the Easter season, and I hope I can do that as well this week for you. Now, our theme for this Lenten season, as you well know, is hope is here. Hope is here. And that means hope is a present thing for us today. It's just not something we can look forward to tomorrow. It's not something that happened in the past. It's something that is with us right now. So I hope in these next few minutes I can give you hope. Uh, I'm going to do that, though, not of my own power, but through God's Word. And I'm going to go to Psalm chapter 34. But first, I want to share a story with you. And I want to see if you can uh, resonate with this, if this is something that maybe has happened to you or something similar has happened to you in your life. Have you ever been in a room and you've been giving advice or speaking truth and you know what you're saying is true? You know what you're saying, uh, what you, what you're saying can be effectual in the lives of others. Uh, you know from experience and wisdom, etc., that what you're saying is right, and yet no one is listening to you. Anybody ever been there? I'm sure you have. I know I have. I remember one time in the Army, uh, as an Army officer, I was speaking to a higher-ranking officer, and I was trying to relay to him some truth about another soldier uh, that was in our unit, a problem that this soldier was having. And this, this officer would have none of it. He had such a high view of this other soldier that he wouldn't listen to my reason, he wouldn't listen to the evidence that was presenting to him that we had a problem with this soldier, and he wrote me off. I knew I was right, but he wrote me off. Some weeks later, when it came out that this soldier truly did have problems, and his problems had risen to uh, illegal activity, then this officer came back to me, this high-ranking officer came to my, back to me and said, you know what, I hate to say it, <laughs> but you were right. Sometimes it's hard to get a hearing with people, isn't it? Sometimes it's difficult, even when you're speaking truth, even when you're speaking passionately, even when you're speaking out of conviction to get people to hear you. Now, Psalm 34, and you'll see where I'm going here in a second. In Psalm 34, we meet David, right? This is a Psalm of David. And David is being pursued and persecuted by the king of Gath, Achish, or whom he calls in here Abimelech. And in order to escape, David does a pretty interesting thing. He pretends to be insane. Now, I'm not going to go through this whole story, but one verse, as I was reading through Psalm 34 today, one verse stood out to me and shows me the hope, just a piece of the hope that we have. In our Lord. And it's verse 6. So Psalm 34, verse 6 says this This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. Let me read it again. Verse 6, Psalm 34. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. When I read verse 6 of Psalm 34, I hear a chain reaction of hope. Hear me on this. We see a chain reaction of hope. And you say, well, Mark, what do you mean? And here's what I mean. First, it says the poor man called. A person of spore, poor spirit. A person of weakness. A person of uh, average uh, abilities and skills. A regular guy, a regular gal, if you will. Called on God. Now, folks, do you realize that we have a God we can call on. Our God is not a deist God who set things in motion and then left. Our God is not like a God of Greek mythology who stands up on high and throws thunderbolts and lightning bolts at us. No, he is a God is with, who's with us, Emmanuel, God with us. He's intimate with us. He shows us his grace and his love and his mercy. He served us by sending his son to die on the cross for our sins. This is a God who's our friend and our father. And because of that, we can call on him. We have a relationship with him where we, we can call out his name. We can make requests and praises directly to him. 
And that should give us hope, shouldn't it? But that's not it. One thing is not a chain reaction. So what's the chain reaction? The poor man called, and then secondly, the Lord heard him. In my illustration just a few minutes ago, I said, oftentimes we talk, and when we're speaking the truth, nobody listens to us. But we have a God who hears us. When we call, the chain reaction starts this way. When we call, he hears. So he doesn't just, it's not just us calling out in the wilderness, right? It's not just us calling into a vacuum. We're calling into open ears, the open ears of God. We call, God hears. That should give us even more hope. And then the chain reaction continues to the third point in the chain reaction. The poor man called and the Lord heard him. And third, he saved him out of all his troubles. The poor man called, God heard, God saved. Do you see that chain reaction? This is the God we serve. We call, he hears, he reaches down and saves us. Now that saving can be a lot of different things. Uh, doesn't mean that God takes away all of our problems and we never have any issues, frustrations, or, or, uh, uh, or, or weaknesses or stumbling blocks in our lives. But what it does mean is that he's there and he responds. We call, he hears, he responds. God is always there. Hebrews 13, 5 says he will never leave us or forsake us. He is always there. Joshua 1, 9 says, be strong and courageous for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. He is there to respond with us because he's there with us. Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus didn't come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Mark chapter 10, verse 45. Folks, do you see the God we serve? And all of this is certain, isn't it? We know that if we call, he hears and he responds. And that, my friends, should give us hope, ultimate hope, grand hope, awesome hope, magnificent hope, excellent hope, hope for the ages, hope that never ends. My prayer for you and for me and for the church universal, for our union of churches, is that we have that kind of hope, to know that we have a God that's with us, a God that we can call out to, a God when we call out who hears in a chain reaction, and then the chain reaction continues, he hears, and then he responds. That's the God you serve, a God who, who, who is the catalyst for the chain reaction of hope. Folks, I don't know about you, but that's the kind of hope I want to have in my life, and that's the hope if I open my eyes and my ears to the words of Scripture, that's the kind of hope I have. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this Lenten season. Thank you for Easter. Thank you for the resurrection. Thank you for the chain reaction of hope that we have uh, in our God, in Christ Jesus. Thank you for being here with us, for, hear, for letting us call out to you, for hearing us, and for responding each and every time. And Lord, we know that response is different for each of us, but we do know you respond every time. You will never leave us or forsake us. You're with us wherever we go. We love you, Lord. We thank you and we praise your name. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, folks, have a wonderful Easter. We'll see you next week for our final devotional message.